Good evening, guys, and welcome to Harry's Half Hour. It has been a while, and I, to be honest, after the last video with the Humber's Hour manager, Tony Richards, I was expecting to do a bit more, but things just got in the way, and I've just been a bit busy. But we're back with a bang. Today's guest. He's a good friend of mine, he's a teammate at Humberside and one of the nicest guys in darts. It's Dave Ladley. Good evening, Dave. How are you? Not too bad, Harry. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back doing this. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, obviously, coming off the back of winning the pairs with our teammate Craig Owens um, yeah. at Skegness, uh, obviously, that was a big event. And how was you feeling sort of going into that? tournament with Craig did you feel like yeah, it was your I, tournament to win yeah I felt like uh, well I know Craig's reliable he's, he's a good solid player anyway I've been playing pretty good and um, you know I, I quite quite fancied our chances but when you look around and you see some of the some of the pairings in there they're, they're amazing like so I was thinking well we'll give it a good shot I always had a bit of a saying that um, you know someone's going to have to play well to beat you and I think with me and Craig, it was quite a good partnership because, you know, we can both score well, we can both finish under pressure. We just complemented each other all right, you know. And um, and actually, yeah, because I'm a bit bit more experienced probably, I'm quite a calm, calm head to be around Craig as well. And, yeah, it worked well. Yeah, so much so, we're going to do it in Wales as well. So we'll be yeah. partnering in Wales. So hopefully there's the uh, Humberside double there, uh, Wales and Skeggy. Yeah. Obviously, um, I've noticed something on one of your, on on your shirts. It says uh, one for the lads, and initially I thought it was to do with like a, a play on words for ladders. But you yeah. actually explained to me it was a is it a mental health group that set up? Yeah, it is. Yeah, in Scunthorpe, we've got a mental health group for for men's mental health, which is which is massive. I, I think um, COVID hasn't done anyone any favors anyway. But um, I've always supported that. It's it's through a couple of good friends of mine in Scunthorpe, um, and the, the opening night, there was hundreds of people turned up and it just gave you a bit of an issue, well, a bit of a, a an insight to how much of an issue there was around, even just in Scunthorpe, because one of the biggest killers of uh, of a man is is suicide. And, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a real, it's a big killer out there. And, you know, um, COVID and that, it's not helped anything. No. Have you ever often found yourself where you've struggled and have you found that you've always wanted a group like that to help you out? Yeah, 100%. I, um, I had my own issues in the past and, and I, I always felt better if I shared something. Uh, and the, the, problem, the problem that a lot of blokes have, it's, it becomes a big thing where they don't want to tell anyone. By telling somebody, it is shared a little bit. And um, and if you if you speak to somebody and it might be somebody who really surprises you, but nine times out of ten, when I've told people I've had issues, they've also had issues. So yeah. you can you can sort of share your experiences together, and you feel like you know I'm not alone. Because one of the points when I was suffering, I thought I was alone. Um, I, I spent hours and hours googling to make sure that I wasn't a freak. I just felt it was me that felt that way. I felt awful so uh it's nice now to be able to help people yeah that obviously that's good because you, you tend to find especially in these type of videos we talk about different things and we talk about the darts and mental health as an issue it does sometimes get raised and it can actually push people to talk even if someone messages you and says i watched your video and you know I, I, yeah. i've been struggling with my mental health myself it's yeah. It's not, you don't do it for that reason, but it also at the same time, yeah. it, it helps because you know that you're then helping someone to go and get I, the help they need. I had some serious battles and I was with the, I was actually playing a lot of PDC at the time and yeah. and actually um, I had to go on some medication and I was worried about the medication, which become another worry that I had. But I had to go see uh, like Peter Manley and, uh, and Alan Warren to make sure that, what I'd got was on a licensed list of the, these drugs yeah. that I was going to be on. In the end, I, I barely took them because I was I've become anxious about the tablets, so yeah. I never really took them. But I, I went to seek help from them, and they they put me towards a group called Thrive, which which helped. Uh, it, it started off with an app, so I tried this app out, 
and it was just on calming down and and being able to focus on your breathing and and, and that sort of thing and, and it helped me out no end uh, so much so that um, they asked me to go and present to the top one two eight so I went to the pro tour and presented to all the pro players my story that I had uh, which one day I'll share it with you um, Harry and is a bit it's a bit shocking but you know it, at the end of the day we uh, we go on a journey and we come out the other end and that's you know that's that's what I wanted to share with people that it can actually help you know by by taking the help that's out there rather than being quiet and thinking you know nobody's going to notice and and just worrying about yourself yeah it's yeah. tough obviously jumping now from obviously you say about journeys jump into the current day obviously yeah. One was at Skegness for that tournament. Uh, we'll say now a teammate, an England teammate and captain, James Horrell, was there. Obviously, yeah. being picked for England. Obviously, I know you were speaking about it to me before. I mean, just how did it feel like sort of that moment building up to getting the call? Was it sort of, were you pacing up and down the house? It, it, yeah, I, I kind of knew I was, I was within a shot, but never. The, I don't know whether you've ever watched um, Shawshank Redemption, but yeah. that's pretty much what I felt like, you know, Red, when he was going up for parole, I've been nominated quite a few times. I've played county for 31 years. So I have been nominated probably 10 times, maybe more, um, because I've been playing good enough to be in the bracket where I, where I could put forward, but um, every time turned down. So when I knew I was nominated again, I kind of thought in the back of my mind, it's not going to happen. So I was a bit like Red when he goes in and, expects to not get his parole and then all of a sudden I uh, took a call from Peter Melton to say you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat about the bush Dave you've been picked for England so I, I nearly fell off my chair I went I went quiet really quiet and he asked if I was still there and I said yeah I'm just trying to come to terms with what you just told me um because I, I was emotional shocked yeah. uh, happy um sad that uh, but my dad, I, I, I couldn't tell my dad that I got it, and it's a promise that I had for my dad, and and kind of kind of sits back to the mental health. But you know, it, it's a good it's a good thing. But, yeah. You know, I couldn't. So I had every emotion going in. Um, yeah, and I just went in the room and in the living room and just leapt for the ceiling and told the wife and kids that I've got it. So awesome. I mean, you could speak to any member of our team, obviously. We'll all say the same thing. We're not just saying it because you're a teammate, but the average you speak for themselves, it's just totally well deserved. So obviously, we'll I'll say again for the record, just well done again, Dave. Yeah, I mean, it's good. like I've said to you, obviously to to represent your country in any sport at any level, it's it's a fantastic achievement, and obviously it's something yeah. you've worked towards, and obviously hoping that you know more more and more people, especially from our side of the the water so to speak it opens that door doesn't it yeah. and, and it shows my teammates that that the opportunities are there Craig Owens had it for Scotland the opportunities are there for the team for all the team to uh, to get in there at some point if they if they're good enough and uh, and there are a lot of players in our team that are bloody good enough but as I said to him in the team talk um, in the last game at Oxfordshire that yes I've got picked for England fantastic I can't can't even begin to explain how happy I am about that. But um, I couldn't do that without averaging well and playing well. And I only average well and play well because I'm happy at home and I'm happy to be around my teammates at Umberside. So, yes, it's for me. That's great. But it's also for the team because it's a, it's a thank you for me to the team that I'm happy and feel really, really at home with them guys and know I can support them and, and the support we get back is awesome so I can just play darts. And, and that's what I've been doing. The, the but, funny thing, though, uh, Harry, is I I got picked uh, for county when I was sixteen, and I was kind of um, I was kind of tipped to be a, the youngest England international, possibly. You know, I was playing well. I could never handle the stage pressure, and it took me years to be able to do all of that. But um, but then to get picked for the team, I looked through it a few weeks ago, uh, and I'm the second oldest. <laughs> So it's took me all that time. I'm now the second oldest in that yeah, team. You know, it's, you, you've yeah. sort of done what you set out to. You managed Bit to sweet. set a record. <laughs> but I think, yeah. to be fair, I think Luke Littler, I think he's just decided to smash that one out of the park, hasn't he? Yeah, it's unbelievable, yeah. 15-year-old. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, obviously, taking it back to whenever when you, you know you first picked up a set of darts. How old was you then when you first started playing the game? I would only be about eight or nine. Um, just I was. Um, I used to watch the darts on telly with John yeah. Lowe and and you know, Eric Bristow, Jockey Wilson, all the all the old household names, and I used to be amazed at how they could. I didn't even know what they were throwing at, but all the darts clicking together, and I, I just got. So I just wanted to throw my darts and get them to click together in a board. Um, and I used to do that all the time and then, you know, just progress slowly until I got it on the on the wall. Um, and it was a bit of a surprise to everyone when I when I did get the full length of the dart throw all set up and I just spent hours and hours and hours. And um, I asked my dad one day to come and play me. It was a Sunday afternoon. So he would go out and play darts yeah. for money, uh, for like, you know, all your uh, Shanghai's and stuff like that. And he'd come back on the Sunday and I said, oh, come and give me a game, Dad. He said, yeah, yeah. So he came upstairs to play me. He didn't realise how good I'd got. So I was already better than my dad. <laughs> so he phoned. He went to see the next door neighbour, was my uncle. He came through. Um, and then he phoned my uncle up from Barton. And he came over. And I ended up with about five people in the bedroom. And my dad was saying, just show them. Show them what you're going to do. He was amazed. And that was like the opening hours twelve then. So yeah. Do you remember your uh, what was your first set of darts you ever run properly? What was your first proper set? I got uh, a brass set of darts that were twenty three grams, um, and they were real big fat things really, and, and that's that's what they were. And um, what for my I think it was my thirty. It was maybe my twelfth. Twelfth birthday, my uncle Paul took me into into town, into Scunthorpe, and I went to uh, I went to the dart shop and I bought a set of twenty four gram uh, darts and, and tungsten, and I was just I was amazed by them darts. So I just played with them that much that I wore them all off, and yeah, yeah. Over the time, I wore them. You say you obviously you made your counter debut at sixteen years old. Um, was that for Lincolnshire or was that Humberside? That was for Lincolnshire. Was that for yeah, it was at Carra Park um, with my good friend Sid Smaller. Um, it's a funny thing there, you know, it was a similar sort of call for me. I was sitting at home and I was going to go watch Sid play for, for County, who was playing against, I think it was Tyne and Way. Uh, we was, we was going to play against them and I was going to go watch Sid. And I got a phone call off the uh, the team manager saying Dave bring your black trousers tomorrow you're in hmm. and it was the same sort of thing you know yeah. you skip forward 31 years to get in the England call it was almost exactly the same but obviously quite a lot of water under the bridge <laughs> uh, obviously your um, Humberside debut then when was that do you remember yeah that was a year after um, so I would only spent a year with Lincolnshire and then I came over to Humberside and played for Ken Borman um, Played in the in the B team for Humberside at Piper Club, Newland Ave. Piper Club. A lot of people were thinking it's a nightclub, but so it's like I used to work with someone who who used to play Friday darts from there. So a lot of people think or get confused, but to sort of all the yeah. people who might see this who were from Hull, they might think actually, yeah, yeah. I remember Piper being a darts place. Yeah, and I never got to play A team um, at that venue. Um, it took me. Took me a little while to get in the A team, probably three or four seasons. Uh, I was under George Beckett as manager when uh, when I got picked for the A team. So uh, I was George was the manager. I was twenty, got picked for the A team, and I was the team captain, twenty wow. years old. So I was the youngest ever full county team captain. So it's another good fact. It's a, it's the, you probably didn't even know. <laughs> So, the facts are coming yeah. tonight. Yeah. Um, do you have any, obviously, like with people who play county, is there any sort of stories you look back on, especially from away days where, obviously, I know now you don't really come to the, you, you're there for the Sunday, but obviously, like, yeah. when you, if you used to travel up, is there any stories you look back on and you sort of have a little chuckle to yourself? Yeah, I mean, there's always there's always the stories. Right? What I mean, there's, there's so many stories that, I'm probably come back to it later on when I've picked a relevant one, but obviously there's always some uh, funny ones. What I always used to enjoy was the last county game of the season yeah. that was away because that's when uh, Flash Ingram and Mickey Lidgett 
and said would all make sure that they uh, they went to that one and it was just a really it was just joyous occasion where everyone got drunk and had a good laugh and the Saturday night um, Flash was a he was a hero. I don't know whether you ever ever met him, but he was he was hilarious. So uh, we just have some really good fun, uh, and you know they're they're my my heroes as a kid. Them them three. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's only Mick still about, uh, which is a damn shame. But um, not a damn shame that Mick's still about. I was with him last night. We're still having a laugh last night, but uh, you know what I mean. It's a shame that the other two are not with us anymore. Yeah. Obviously. Coming away from darts, is there any other sports you pay particular attention to? Is there anything you like watching? I do. I, I like watching boxing. I do like watching it. Um, I like, um, yeah, anything anything like that, really. Football, I do like. Uh, I don't like Scunthorpe so much at the minute. They're getting hammered week in, week out, and they're going out in the league. Um, I do like Man United, so I, I like watching them. But again, at the minute, I don't really like watching them. I don't like how... Uh, Things are going at the minute, so yeah. um, you know I don't know too much about it, but uh, I do like to watch a game. Obviously, England yeah. for, the, uh, for the football team, I really enjoyed that. Uh, any game with England, and I mean, it was one of them. Especially, I think sort of when it comes to a, a major tournament, Euros, World Cup, you do get it where there's just this sort of strange feeling that sweeps the nation. Everyone sort of gets brushed into a case of it's coming home, it's coming home. I mean, yeah. don't get, obviously, we're getting. I think we're getting closer with the team we've got. I was sort of saying the the other week that you look at the team like Germany and and Spain, and I think they're relying too heavily on the the older boys who yeah. probably don't cut it anymore. I mean, look at when we beat Germany, yeah. they won it two 0 Sorry, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much what we used to do. Yeah, and and Germany used to they they would come out with a team. A lot of people. There were names, but there weren't really names that you would imagine could do anything. But they had a knack. Germany have got a knack, yeah. and this is what Humberside are very good at. They can put a team together that work together um, of all varying standards that just know how to gel as a team. And I think that England are getting closer to that. So that's my that's my take on it. Yeah, I uh, I went sorry yeah. I, I went to uh, it was my lad stag do. When uh, when England were playing um, the last time, and obviously we got all the heroes, and we're, we're all talking about um, about Southgate. So I said to the group of lads there, "Oh, do you remember when Southgate missed the penalty?" And absolutely no one was born then. So so it sort of put me in my box. <laughs> it, was <sort laughs> of like, it was sort of like a, a tumbleweed <laughs> went across the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just remember when he missed the penalty? Yeah, yeah. No, no one remembers that. Um, obviously, a lot of darts players. I mean, I speak to the. I was speaking to Martin Atkins, and he, he likes his fishing. Is that something you like to do? do you, yeah, do you I, I've, I've got some fishing gear, and I, I do. I do like to. I ain't been out this year yet. I will do. I like chilling. I really like relaxing. One of the things I do, you can't see in my room now. I, I picked up a guitar about four years ago, and I, I learned a guitar. So uh, that's what I've been doing. I'm. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty much OCD-ish with with things, and I, I just if I get something, I wanna I wanna get it right, and uh, that that type of person, you know, is is the right type of person to pick up a guitar because it ain't easy to play. So yeah. I enjoy doing that, and I find my relaxing time doing that. To be honest, is there anything you particularly like playing on the guitar? Any type of particular type of music? I love I love country music. Um, I like. Um, like Chris Stapleton sort of stuff, um, uh, Tennessee whiskey, that sort of thing. I, I love playing anything like that. Um, at the minute, open chords, anything that's open chords, I can do. Um, learning my bar chords and stuff like that. So it's going to take me ages. That probably means nothing to you, but it, it is. Uh, it's it's not easy at all. But I really love it. Yeah. I was going to say, if there's any musicians watching, that they'll know what you mean to be. It's just sort of. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Impressive yeah. jargon, but to uh, I don't profess to be a musician, but I can uh, I, I can play quite a lot of stuff. When you learn, I, I know about twenty or thirty chords. As yeah. soon as you know that, you, you can play more or less anything. Do you remember what the first song you fully played? What was the first song you? Played? Yeah, "Peaceful Easy Feeling" by Eagles. Great, so that is a great song. I love yeah. the Eagles. 
That's yeah. my dad's fault. He used to have the CD. Yeah. And Dan and we, he always used to put it on. Yeah. I yeah. Peaceful it. Easy Feeling by the Eagles was one of the, one of the first ones. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything, obviously, with lockdown, what happened, obviously, a couple of years ago, sort of came the rise. I mean, I've no, it's been big for a while, but came the rise of Netflix series and television shows. Is there anything that particularly tickles your fancy on? I, I, I do like anything like that. I watched Ozarks, which I really enjoyed, and also uh, Cobra Kai, um, yeah. which it became a bit of an addiction. So we watched all of that. So really enjoyed that. But uh, during that sort of time, Harry, we'd been a, a manager at a potato factory. We were flat out. Yeah. Everybody wanted potatoes. So uh, I was very busy at work. Yeah. Um, and then obviously doing some of the online darts as well, which was which was quite good, but I could never get my head around it. No, I mean, it's a lot of people still do it now. And I just, yeah. I, th- I had a little league going, but I had it amongst obviously like a few of the Umbazar boys and a couple of other mates. And it was just, yeah. It was just easier because. You can it's people you play regular darts with on a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever. Yeah. And it's people you can trust who you know aren't gonna cheat. So for me that was yeah. a big thing. It was it was sort of a trust thing. Yeah, I, I found I didn't always trust what people were saying. And then I also found the opposite. When I started to play well, I was getting silence, like, you know, what what's happening here, sort yeah. of thing. So I felt guilty. And I remember playing one game and I did so many 140s. I ended up shouting 100 in the end. And it was, a, you know, I just, and I just thought, this ain't for me. That was my last, that was my last game. I just didn't feel, I didn't feel right. It's just not, not for me. No. Uh, but what I did is I got two or three friends, Mike Lawrence, Daz Johnson, and, and also Daz Layden. And we did some matches between us, like so. I knew, you know, you can trust that one, but yeah, didn't exactly. like the competitions really. Although me and Dells did well, we won one of the big uh, pairs competitions in that. It was just really odd because um, you play a game, and then as soon as the game's over, you stop, and you just there's just you. Yeah, you know, usually in a pub, you win a game, and then you go chat with your mates and sit down and get a beer and, and that sort of thing, but. Uh, the game finished and I was just sat on my own in the darts room, picked my guitar up and it was just silence. Uh, yeah, it was an odd one. It was a really weird yeah. situation. Um, obviously, now we've, we've covered sort of a lot of stuff, obviously, about darts and what have you. It's just do a nice little quick fire bit, what I do at the end. Yeah. So I'll give you two options or I'll give you a little question. Just don't think about it, just straight with the answer. Yeah. So we've got Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Vodka or whiskey? Okay. Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Best walk on in darts? Marvel. Your favourite player of all time? I would say Colin Lloyd. A future star of darts? Luke Littler. Your best mate in darts? I've so many, it's unbelievable. Uh, Really have one. I've got hundreds. Underrated player. Uh, don't know. It's meant to be quick, quick fire. These out there. Um, don't know. I don't know. There's there's many underrated players. There really yeah. is. Um, yeah. Premier League of Darts winner. Johnny Clayton. So that's them questions, and um, we're going to conclude the video there. I would like to thank, my, obviously, my guest Dave for coming on and being the first one of this sort of the new series, so to speak. Obviously, I've got a few guests lined up, Ellen McCairns, amongst others, and Dave being the first one. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been an honour, and I'll catch up with you at the Magic Weekend, Dave. Cheers, buddy. Okay, see you there. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Like Bye-bye. and subscribe, guys.